The topic of this lecture is vibrations and waves. Every object undergoes certain types of motion or shape change which repeat over time. Those periodic motions are called vibrations or oscillations. Those vibrations or oscillations involve the motion of all particles that compose an object. And so these vibrations are pretty complex when all of the particles must be accounted for. To be able to understand the concept of vibrations, we are going to only discuss simple vibrations or oscillations. For example, the swing of a mass attached to a spring or a pendulum would be an example of simple vibrations or oscillations. So any periodic motion in general can be classified as vibration or oscillation. We are going to discuss simple vibrations or oscillations. Examples of such simple motions are the swinging of a mass attached to a spring or a pendulum. So when I say a mass attached to a spring, we can have two different configurations. We can have a horizontal configuration where we have a spring that is fixed at one end and then on the other end of the spring we have a mass that's attached. And so this system can be put in motion and the mass will be moving horizontally left and right and that is the oscillation of the mass connected to the spring. Another possibility is that the mass is hanging on the spring. Here is the spring and then the mass is attached to the spring like so and so if the mass is being pulled on or pushed up and let go, then the mass will oscillate vertically like so. The example with pendulum is similar to the mass hanging on a spring, except for the oscillations are in a um, different plane of motion. So here is the pendulum. This is simply a string with attached bob on the free end of this uh, string and the bob has a mass and so then the motion of the bob is along an arc like so and the oscillation is back and forth like so. Each of those oscillating systems that I've put on the board can be characterized with several parameters. And those parameters are equilibrium position, cycle, period, frequency, and amplitude. Let's now define those parameters and explain what they mean. Let's first talk about equilibrium position. The equilibrium position of an oscillating system is defined as the position the system is in when no net force is applied on it. Here to illustrate the equilibrium position of a system, I'm going to use my two examples, a mass attached to a spring and hanging vertically down and also a pendulum. Here is my mass hanging from this spring and so this system is currently left on its own. No external forces are applied 
to the mass, the mass is not moving in any direction. Then the equilibrium position would be the current position of the mass. So this can be also thought of as the state of the spring when the spring is neither stretched nor compressed once the mass is attached to it. So once the mass is attached to the spring, there will be a little bit of stretch, but then the system is no longer moving, the mass is no longer oscillating up and down. That is the equilibrium position. And then um, any displacement from this position will result in vibrations of the system. Now let's look at the equilibrium position for a pendulum. So here is the pendulum left alone without the action of external forces. This bob will be hanging vertically straight down and the system will not be moving in any direction. So then the level at which the bob is located when no external forces act on the pendulum is the equilibrium position. Any displacement from this position, meaning applying force to the bob so that it swings to the left or to the right, will be a departure from the equilibrium position because once the bob displaces, it is going to start to come up above the equilibrium position. Um, in either direction, if it displaces in either direction, it's going to always come above the equilibrium position. So any displacement from the equilibrium position will result in oscillations. The next parameter associated with simple vibrations is the cycle. A cycle is defined as a part of the periodic motion after the completion of which the motion repeats itself. So again, a cycle is a part of the periodic motion after the completion of which the motion repeats itself. The easiest way to sort of illustrate this um, concept is to draw the evolution of oscillations of a system. And I will choose that to be a mass hanging from a spring. Here is a time-lapse drawing of the oscillations of a mass attached to a spring. So the mass attached to a spring, if I pull it down and let go, is going to oscillate up and down. Now I have selected different positions of the mass as it's oscillating up and down that are labeled with one, two, three, and so on and so forth until 12. And then I shifted them to the right to account for uh, elapsed time during oscillations and to be able to illustrate the concept of a cycle. The dotted red line here represents the equilibrium position. So the first step is to pull the mass below the equilibrium position to here and then let go. So what happens is the mass is going to start to move in upward direction. It's going to get to the equilibrium position, but it doesn't stop there, as we know. It's going to continue to move up at position number four. The mass continues to move up, and then at position number five, the mass stops for an instant of time, and then the spring starts to push back on the mass. So the mass after that, at position six, will start to go down towards the equilibrium position, at position number seven, the mass passes the equilibrium position and still is going down. Position number eight, the mass is below the equilibrium position but still going down. And then when the mass reaches the lowest point at position number nine, the lowest point of the 
the oscillation, it stops for an instant and then it starts to go back up right here. Position 11, the mass is continuing to move up. At position 12, mass, the mass is continuing to move up and so on and so forth. So now let's look at the uh, positions of the mass from points 1 through 9. So each position is unique in the way that the mass is oscillating. So here the mass is starting to move up, reaches the highest point, stops for an instant of time, and then starts to move down until it reaches the lowest point at position 9. After that, the mass starts again to move up until it will reach the highest point somewhere here, and then will continue to move down. So as you can see, there is a definitive picture here of the oscillations in terms of the definition of a cycle. A cycle is a part of the periodic motion after the completion of which the motion repeats itself. So here is a periodic motion and here is the cycle. So the cycle that the mass undergoes is from position 1 to position 9 and then after that the motion starts to repeat itself. So let's trace the cycle here with a different color. So here is the cycle, the motion from 1 all the way to 9. That is one cycle. After that, the motion starts to repeat itself, so that will be another cycle, and so on and so forth. So this illustrates the meaning of the phrase, the motion repeats itself. So that also means that if you were to take this portion of the motion here, or oscillation rather, and superimpose it on top of this oscillation, or part of the oscillation, all positions of the masses will exactly overlap. And you wouldn't, wouldn't be able to tell which cycle is which. You wouldn't be able to tell that this is the first cycle and this would be the second cycle when you superimpose them on top of each other. We are going to later talk about frequency of oscillations and we will see how that is related to the concept of a cycle. Another quantity associated with oscillations is period of oscillations. The period of oscillations is defined as the time it takes to complete one cycle of the oscillations of a system. The period we label with capital T and for simplicity we just refer to that as the period. The units in which the period is measured would be seconds or minutes or hours, but of course the base units will be seconds. Let's illustrate with a simple drawing what it means to, uh, what is the meaning of the period uh, for one cycle. So here is my oscillating mass attached to a spring that can swing vertically up and down. Again, I spread the oscillation horizontally with time to be able to better illustrate the cycles of oscillations. So here I have two cycles of the oscillation shown. We start from the lowest position right here. The mass starts to swing up, so it moves like that. And then when it reaches the lowest position again, then it starts to move up again. And then after that, it reaches the lowest position one more time. So we have cycle number one and cycle number two. So in terms of the period of oscillations, the period is the time it takes for one cycle to complete itself. So that would be the time that it takes from the mass to get from this position back to that position after swinging all the way up to a stop and then back down to a stop here. So the time that it takes to get between those two positions is the period T. And then for the second cycle, like so, 
the time it takes for it to complete itself is also the period of oscillations. So just to make sure that it's understood, in reality what we see when we talk about a mass that is hanging on a spring and it's oscillating vertically, we have the spring, this is the equilibrium position, this is the mass. The oscillations are just up and down like so. So one full cycle will be the mass starting from this position, swinging all the way up to a stop and then coming right back down to this position. So that is one full oscillation. Starting from here, getting up there, going back here. The time for that to happen is the period of oscillations. Another parameter that is very important for describing oscillations is the frequency of oscillations. The frequency f of oscillations is the number of cycles completed in one second. The units for frequency are herds. And you may be familiar with that unit uh, since um, you may have listened to radio and when you adjust the radio station frequency, you are essentially tuning to the proper frequency in hertz so that you can listen to the radio station that you like. So this is pronounced hertz. The frequency of oscillations is, again, as defined, calculated as the number of cycles that are completed per se for one second of time. So if the oscillations are such that three cycles are completed in one second, then the frequency will be three hertz. If 10 cycles are completed in one second, then the frequency will be 10 hertz, and so on and so forth. There is a relationship between the frequency of oscillations and the period of oscillations. And this relationship is given by this formula. The frequency of oscillations is equal to 1 divided by the period of oscillations. And so from here you can also see that the units of hertz are equal to an inverse second. And so if you know the period of oscillations, then you could calculate the frequency of oscillations and vice versa. If you knew the frequency of oscillations, you could calculate the period of oscillations. Let's do one example using the concept of period and frequency. A pendulum oscillates with a period of 5 seconds. What is the frequency of oscillations? So we know that the period is 5 seconds. We are looking for the frequency. From the previous slide, we know that the frequency is equal to 1 over the period of oscillations. So then the frequency will be equal to 1 divided by 5 seconds, which is equal to 0.2 hertz. Let's do one more example. A spring oscillates with frequency of 80 hertz. What is the period of oscillations of the spring? This time we know the frequency, 80 hertz. We are looking for the period. Again, I'm going to use the relationship between frequency and period. Namely, the frequency is equal to 1 divided by the period. From here, I can solve for the period. So the period will be equal to 1 divided by the frequency, which is 1 divided by 80 hertz which gives me 0 0.0125 seconds. Amplitude of oscillations is defined as the maximum deflection or displacement from the equilibrium position. To better illustrate the meaning of that statement, let's sketch our two examples, a mass hanging from a spring and a pendulum. Here is my mass hanging from the spring. It is pulled below the equilibrium position. This is the lowest point to which the mass can go during oscillations. Then the distance from this position to the equilibrium position is the amplitude of oscillations. Then of course the mass swings up and passes the equilibrium position until it stops somewhere here. And then the distance from the equilibrium position 
to the new position of the mass is also the amplitude. Of course, we have to always consider ideal situations, in which case the displacement from equilibrium position from here to here should be equal to the displacement from the equilibrium position from here to here. So those two distances obviously should be equal to each other. Now let's see what the uh, amplitude looks like in the case of a pendulum. Here is my pendulum. This is the equilibrium position. The pendulum swings to the left and this is the highest point it, can, it reaches. Stops there for an instant. The horizontal distance from the equilibrium position to the position of the bob is the amplitude. The pendulum then swings to the other side of the equilibrium position, reaches this highest point where it stops for an instant and then the distance, horizontal distance from the equilibrium position to the position of the bob is also the amplitude. For an ideal situation where there is no friction, the bob is going to swing to the same height on each side of the equilibrium position. Therefore, the distance from the equilibrium position is the same, or in other words, as it should be expected, the amplitude is the same on either side. It's a constant. 